For more than 600 years, most parts of Eastern Assam constituted an independent country ruled by the Ahom dynasty. Mang Mao was the place from which the Ahoms originally came. Mang Mao presently is in the Dihang Dai Singfo, an autonomous unit in the Yunnan province of China. The Ahom Kingdom was established in the year 1228 AD at the place called Saraidil. Under the able leadership of Prince Sukafa, the Ahoms migrated in 1215 AD along with five chiefs, their families and 9,000 able-bodied men to establish the kingdom. One of the noteworthy achievements of the Ahoms, who ruled for nearly six centuries, is the building of large number of monuments spread over the Brahmaputra Valley. The Ahom monuments can be classified under two heads, religious and secular. temples, tanks and the maidams or vault-roofed cemeteries constitute the religious group. The secular group on the other hand include the royal palace, magazine houses, monolithic bridges and so on. We now take you to Nagashankara temple in Darang which stands as the first instance of temple building by the Ahoms. It was built by Suchenfa in 1480, but the present structure is a new shrine built on the old ruins. The archaeological department and the forest department together maintain this site. One can see an ancient and important temple and also animals like deer, bear etc. in the temple premises. The temple site has a scenic beauty and attracts several visitors. The main deity Shivalinga is immersed in water and is not generally visible. The Gorokya Dole Situated on the bank of Dikho in Nazira is one of the earliest temples built by the Ahom King Susenfa or Pratap Singha who reigned between 1603 and 1641. The uniqueness of this temple lies in the fact that it is a small temple approximately of 8 meters in height having a vinara in octagonal shape and a rectangular mandapa. The outer face of wall is adorned by Devakastas. Of the several Ahom temples which belong to the earlier phase of construction, ruins of one is seen at Vishwanath Ghat in Sonitpur district. The main temple is no more in existence. Only, the remains can be seen in the middle of the river. The ruins of the temple are submerged in water and it is believed that the deity Shivalinga is visible only six months in a year. Another Shiva temple built during 1603 to 1641 is found on the bank of Brahmaputra in Vishwanath Ghat. building activity emerged gradually during the reign of King Gadadhar Singha. This is the Thara Dole in Sipsagar, one of the surviving temples built during Gadadhar Singha's period. This was constructed during 1681 to 1696. The temple is square in plan and in elevation. 
It typically represents the dochala type of cottage found in Assam and Bengal architecture. Another temple belonging to King Gadadhar Singha's period is the Umananda Temple on the Hillock Island of the River Brahmaputra in Guwahati. This temple is erected upon the ruins of a stone temple of the early medieval period upon its original ground plan. It is Pancharatna in character and its elevations resembles the Rekhadol variety of North Indian temple. The absence of Anga Shekharas is remarkable here. The main deity is worshipped as Lord Chandrasekhara. We now take you to the Jai Sagara group of temples on the north and western bank of Jai Sagar in Sipsagar. These temples were built during the rule of Ahom King Rudra Singha, son of Gadadhar Singha, during the period 1696 to 1714 AD. Like father, King Rudra Singha also had keen interest in building temples. One can say that temple building touched its peak during his reign. The most important structure in the Jaisagara group is its Vishnu Dole, which is also called Keshavanarayana Dole. As one can see, graphic designs have been used on the outer profile of the Sikhara. The dole is advanced in plan and elevation and consists of Vimana, Antarala and two Mandapas. This Shiva Dole too was constructed during King Rudra Singha's reign. It is seen that this Shiva Dole of the Jaisagar group of temples is much inferior in plan. The mandapa of this temple belonged to the Dochala type of Asmi's hut. The tallest of all the Ahom temples is the Shiva Dole at Sipsagar. It is 37 meters in height. This was built by King Shiva Singha in 1733 AD. The temple has a Garbhagraha and the Mandapa. The apex of the temple is gold-plated. The four Angasekharas are really imposing. The Shiva Dole is beautified with floral and sculptural ornamentation. Ahom architecture attained perfection only during Shiva Singha's period. The Vishnu Dole is yet another structure and the same premises built by Queen Ambika Kumari. Its Sikhara is finished with ornamented vertical and horizontal lines and these Devakostas are adorned with Dasavatara figures of Vishnu.
The Devi Dole, adjacent to the Shiva Dole, is a graceful structure, well proportionate and balanced in architectural plan and treatment. Shiva Singha's name will remain immortal in the annals of Ahom architecture. He also built this Anantasaji Vishnu temple or Kurma Janardana temple in North Guwahati. As one can see, the main deity Vishnu is beautifully carved on a single piece of rock. King Rajeshwara Singha embarked upon a policy of renovation and reconstruction of old temples. The Kamakya Temple is one of them. One of the finest specimen of Ahom architecture built during the reign of Rajeshwara Singha is this Negriting Shiva Temple. Hajo Hoigriv Madhav Temple represents the typical temple architecture. The stone temple is in good state of preservation. Relics of pre Ahom period are also seen here. But the present temple can date back to the 16th century AD. Coach King Raghudeva rebuilt this temple. The rows of elephants and other designs seen on the body of the temple are fine specimen of Asmi's art. The temple enshrines the image of Lord Hygriff Madhav, Vishnu and some other gods and goddesses. Mani Parvat is the name given to the place which holds the main deity. The Buddhists regard this as an image of Buddha. Poor 
Kamaka stands on another hill at Hajo. This is an old mosque built of bricks during the 17th century. Inside the stone tomb, Pir Gyasuddin Aulia is revered. An inscription in Persian is fixed to the wall of the mosque. Both Hindus and Muslims visit this place at Hajjo. This is Kedar Mandir. The stone temple stands on the Kedar Hill. It enshrines a Shiva Linga and its Garbhagraha. The temple, with its stone fragments, belong to the early medieval period of Rajeshwara Singha. The Ranganatha Temple at Rangpur in Shivsagar district is yet another place of worship for the Shivites. It is constructed in 1703 AD during the reign of Swargadev Rudra Singha. We shall now see some of the secular monuments built by the Ahom kings. Ghanashyam Ghar in the northwest of Jaisagar tank is one of the architectural wonders of this place. This has three arch openings rested on ornamental pillars. The embellishment of the entire architecture is done in terracotta relief of floral, birds, motifs and animal forms. Scenes from Ramayana, Dasavatara figures and legends of Lord Krishna are brilliantly depicted on the pillars. This was constructed by Ghansauddin, a Muslim from Bengal converted to Hinduism. He was the architect who built palaces for King Rajeshwar Singha. This ghar was constructed during the period 1751 to 1769 AD. This is Fakwa Dole at Rangpur. It has a terraced plinth, octagonal in plan with temple structure at the top. However, the temple has been broken. There are eight Angashekharas at the ground level of this structure. Of the secular architectural structures, Gorgon Palace occupies a special place. This is the only standing remains of the residence of the Ahom kings with five stories said to have been erected. This was built by King Rajeshwar Singha in 1751-69 to 69 AD. The window panes doors and the inner passages of the structure are often finished with terracotta decorative works. As one can see, this is a huge mansion with heavy walls.
This is another magnificent structure, the Tolatol Ghor at Sipsagar. This is brick built palace, originally seven storied. This has underground cellars and a secret pathway. This was constructed during the reign of Rajeshwar Singha in the period 1751 to 1769 AD. It also has a miniature temple atop it. The double-storied Ronghor near Talatal Ghor is yet another magnificent structure. This brick-built palatial building has been decorated with miniature terracotta work. The roof of this two-storied amusement pavilion is designed after the fashion of a thatched house intended for the kings and his court to witness the games and parades. It is an amphitheater for viewing animal fight built by the Ahom king Pramotta Singha in 1744-51 AD. The Maidams, the Ahom royal tombs at Saraidil, a unique form of architecture developed by Ahoms. It was here that Sukhafa, the first Ahom monarch, set up his permanent capital in 1253 AD, which continued to remain as such till the reign of King Tayokhamti in 1381-1389 AD. Saraidil can be divided into three principal areas, capital areas, symmetry area and sacred area. Though no structural evidence remains of this capital area at present, the remains in the cemetery area and the religious area are still to be seen. It was here that the kings and royal dignitaries were laid to rest after death. Saraidu is the holiest place of the Ahoms. Here, Sukapa, the first Ahom king, built his capital. He also established the shrines of his god, Sumdu, and other gods of the Ahoms. And here also, from his time, the mortal remains of all the Ahom kings were entombed in shrine a big, under big mounds called Moidams. Moidams are actually the mausoleums and hundreds of Moidams are there where the Ahum kings, their queens, the prince, the princesses and other members of royal families were entombed. And at the beginning of course these Moidams were are built of art and art. But later on, when the Ahom kings developed the permanent structures, they built underground chambers where the, the mortal remains of the kings were placed there. Such moidams are now unique contribution of the Ahoms uh, to the to Indian civilization. They can be compared only in miniature to the royal tombs of China and the Egyptian pyramids. This is the famous Gauri Sagar tank and temple. Queen Puleswari, the dancing girl queen of the Ahom King Shiva Singha, excavated the tank and built the three temples during the period 1729 to 33 AD. Among the Ahom monuments, the tanks form an important item. The Ahom kings excavated a large number of tanks spread over in many parts of Assam, more particularly in Sipsagar. In Sipsagar, we have got 
several very big tanks like the Jai Sagar tank, the tank Sagar town and Gauri Sagar temple tank. The Yahum, they knew the technique of finding out the source of water, permanent source and this is why these tanks are never dried up. The water remains up to the brink of the bank. These are also being used in different places for utilization by the public when water source in other places dry up. The secular monuments include various magazine houses constructed by the Ahom kings. The Ahoms built several monolithic bridges. One of these is over the river Namdang on the National Highway 37, which witnesses the maximum traffic. Though the sun has set on the Ahum Kingdom 200 years ago, the architectural structures built by them still fascinate us and will ever fascinate.